The Minister of Environment, Mahama Yariga, says a sub-regional decision will be required in order to guarantee the importation of low sulfur fuel in, into the country. Reports revealed that fuel imported into Ghana, mainly diesel, contained high sulfur levels and do not meet the acceptable standards in the European Union as well as the United States of America. Though the MPA has revealed the acceptable sulfur levels contained in fuels to 10 parts Per, per million. Uh, Mr. Yariga explained that it will be more cost effective for West African countries to import fuel with the same sulfur levels. A report by Swiss NGO Public Eye, in collaboration with the Africa Center for Energy Policy, revealed commodity trading firms exploited the lax regulatory standards to sell dirty diesel to African countries, including Ghana. Following this, the NPA revised the acceptable national sulfur specification for diesel from the maximum 3,000 ppm to 10 ppm. Speaking at a roundtable discussion on environmental protection at the U.S. Embassy, Environment Minister Mahama Yariga explained it will be cost effective if all West African countries adhere to a common standard. The initiative has to be a sub-regional one. Sub-regional because we mostly lift our oil from Europe and the tankers that lift the oil uh, are so huge that your small number of consumers in Ghana, um, relative to the size of the tank, uh, it doesn't make economic sense for them to lift just for Ghana. So if Ghana's standards are so high, and the standards in Nigeria are so low, and those in La Côte d'Ivoire low, it means we will need a separate tanker that will just lift for us and bring, okay? So the effort is also a sub-regional one yes. that you know, we all want to have the same standard mm. so that when our suppliers are coming, they bring the same product and across the region they supply to us. So there's a sub-regional effort to set the standards under ECOWAS and at the same time we are already moving very fast and insisting on uh, those standards but also giving our refinery a reasonable time to make the investments needed to be able to meet the 10 ppm standard that we are setting for them. Addressing the issue of water quality in Ghana, a representative of U.S. and Environmental Protection Agency disclosed the U.S. government will partner Ghana to set up laboratory facilities in Accra purposely for monitoring the quality of water. Gina McCarthy is however urging government to make data on water samples available in order to build public confidence in the quality of water produced monitoring and standardizing the, the lab tests themselves as well as, as uh, having third-party certifiers so that you can be sure that somebody independent is looking at that and verifying those and then the, the, the uh, uh, EPA can then look at the certifiers so the job is, is, is a lot easier but there builds levels of confidence. The other thing though that we've found and we'll have further discussions about this is you need to give the public the data themselves. They want to see it. Public transparency of data is usually important from a confidence perspective. You know, they don't want to trust government with things that are as vital as, as you know, drinking water, which, which everybody expects to have available to them, but is always cautious, even when it's made available, that it's going to be clean enough. And so we'll start working to see if there's ways in which we can help make sure that, that there's data systems to get that information out so people can see for themselves We've had to do that in the U.S., and, but it's also been a, a tremendous learning experience. Expansion works have begun on the Tema motorway to ease traffic congestion. Meridian Port Services, the company partnering government, has begun works to add one lane to each side of the 7.3-meter two-lane dual carriageway. According to the Meta for Roads and Highways, Inu Safuseni, some 28 million Ghana cities have so far been allocated for the project and would also be completed on the 16th of June 2017. This obviously is an interim measure. It means we are very much concerned as a ministry, as Ghana Ports and Harbour Authority, as Ministry of Transport, as MPS, we are all very concerned that when the expansion of the port begins, traffic will build up here. And so to ensure that people who, con who will continuously use this road do not go through difficulties, we need to do this intervention and that's what we are doing. This
this one will take us six months. So whatever inconvenience that we are going to create will be six months. And then we will have the product that would substantially mitigate whatever hardship that we are facing I mean, uh, uh, completed and handed over to us. Now we are eternally grateful to Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. I say Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority because it is they who found an investor to expand their ports. And in expanding the ports, they anticipate an increase in cargo. And like he rightly said, in Ghana, more than 90% of our goods and services are moved by road. And so this road is a potential bottleneck. Where cargo is increased at the port, importers will want to evacuate their cargo quickly out of the port. And so they partner us to see how MPS can help in removing this potential bottleneck. Well, the minister also mentioned that the Kwame Nkrumah Circle Interchange is almost complete and will be commissioned in the first week of November this year. The chief executive of Mer Meridian Port Services, the company partnering government to undertake the phase one of the project, Mohamed Samara, spoke to journalists. Tama Port is, uh, is a big port. It's the biggest and the largest port on the west coast. We are the second largest economy and certainly we are the biggest port among all ports. So basically, the road network and the corridor is already important today and we really need to upgrade it to match the future of Ghana and the sub-region. And for this, we have been working closely, of course, with our partners and uh, regulator GPHA and in close coordination with the Ministry of Roads and Highway and the team from Ghana Highway Authority and uh, the Department of Urban Road. Basically this is a new port development for those who did not see it. This is an existing harbour and in proportion you can tell the difference. This is a massive port development. This is part of the GPHA master plan. This is actually the first step inside the GPHA master plan. The harbor basin, what you see here, we will develop four container berths, and behind it, a yard and a multi-user facility, which would also be serviced through rail. The rest of the harbor basin is open for development by GPHA in due course. This one of the bottom line around the road, uh, along the road is this roundabout, and this is what we want to develop. Just to give you a feel, this is the Akrata Mamoto Way, that itself is the roundabout, and then connected to the harbor road and as well as running parallel to the, uh, to the hospital room and then the Meridian Road. Joy FM, in collaboration with Enterprise Life, has constructed an ultra-modern library at WA in the WA municipality of the Upper West Region. The project, which is an initiative of Joy FM, was funded by Enterprise Life at a cost of some 68,000 Ghana cities. The library project is expected to boost reading culture of children in the locality. Construction of the magnificent edifice started in 2011 to give children access to educational resources during and after school hours. Joy FM Business Development Director Charles Van Dyke gave an overview of the Read Handed Library project. Since the year 2011 when this campaign was initiated, we have made some strides with our partners. A library in Asofan in the Greater Accra region, a library in Hokoji in the Volta region, this is our third one, and there's one where, like this one, the structure is completed, but the finishing touches have not been done. The facility is located at a place known as the Citadel of Education, where the first primary school was established 99 years ago. Headmaster of the school, Seydou Mahama, could not hide his joy having such a facility going into their centenary year. We all know what libraries do for children. With on our timetable where we have library studies, and we have one hour library studies every week, the class. With the availability of this uh, 
facility around we shall make good use of it one municipal director of education Haji Fusata Hamidu spoke of the benefits children in the municipality will get having such a facility at their disposal in our office we have redeployed an officer who has studied English to be our coordinator and uh, one thing he's done is he's also gone around looking for facilities we could use for library uh, for our kids. Executive Director of Enterprise Life, Jake Limbenyi, noted that the sighting of the library in Wa will go a long way to enhance and empower children in the Wala community. This library, we believe, will give to these children what Enterprise Life has always given Ghanaians an advantage to a better life, an advantage to realize their innocent childhood dreams, an advantage for them to be the best people they can be, an advantage for them to be useful global citizens, but more importantly, for them also to provide an advantage to others. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. The Greater Accra Regional Director of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Linda Van Otu, wants girls to take their reproductive health issues more seriously. She says this would also guarantee respect of their health rights as well as their safety. She was speaking at a program to mark the International Day of the Girl Child. Hannah Odami was there and has filed this report. Since 2012, the girl child has been celebrated annually on October 11 to emphasize better opportunities and increase awareness of gender inequality faced by girls worldwide. According to the UN, however, one issue that is standing in the way of the girls' progress is child marriage. Dr. Van Otu believes those are curse because girls have not been groomed on their reproductive health. Unfortunately for us, we have within our statistics girls who are less than 15 years of age who become pregnant. I believe that sometimes these girls don't really understand what the body goes through when they are growing up. You know, at that stage, a young girl feels like being touched by a boy. It is part of growing up. And we have to understand that it doesn't mean go and have sex with a boy or a man. Dr. Vanotu acknowledges that health facilities in the country are not friendly to accommodate the queries of such girls. Access needs to improve. I believe that the language we use must improve. We should be able to talk about these things in the local dialects. It could be Ga, it could be Fanti, it could be Tree, ever any language. Our facilities are said to be adolescent health friendly or youth friendly, but when you go there, you find that it may not be so accessible. So we need to improve upon some of these things. The executive director of the NGO, Hope for Future Generations, Cecilia Senyo, said her NGO is putting special focus on girls with disabilities. The specific objectives or objective of the proposed interventions are to provide mentoring opportunities that empower young persons with disability and promote interaction and linkages between young persons with disability and other young people nationwide. To strengthen advocacy on the human rights of persons with disability as prescribed in the Ghana Disability Act. Do you think we have to put focus on the girl child as we do every year? Yes. Why? Because when we are focused focus on the girl child who become somebody else in future for joy news i am hannah odami And before we wrap up the news, some election issues. And the chairperson of the Electoral Commission says the disqualification of the 12 presidential candidates was an action taken all based on law. Madam Charlotte Ose has been speaking at a media engagement organized by the Media Foundation for West Africa in the northern region. She adds the Electoral Commission is not aware of any intended legal suit, but is also prepared if any of such actions come up. 
with them, which is the law. Some have started talking with us, some have had lawyers write to us, but really, it's a matter of um, people's rights and how they want to enforce it. It's not for us to make that determination. But in court, it depends on how quickly the court disposes of the case. It depends on the kind of case that comes. The candidates that their nominations were rejected, it was rejected for different grounds. So they all do not have the same kind of, um, they will not be going to court, I don't presume, in a group, it's going to be individual cases. And depending on how the judges will deal with it, we have to take it as it comes and we'll take a decision on that. One voter cannot endorse more than one candidate. That is the law. The parliament that we all voted into parliament passed that law. We went with that law. Political parties have access to the register. The candidates want the register, they have access to the register to do their own checks. If someone wants to be president of this country and you take nomination forms that have certain legal requirements following that form, it is up to you and your own responsibility to make sure that what you submit meets the requirements of the law. Nobody appears on the register twice, so it is impossible for anyone to um, endorse someone twice. In any case, this was time for you guys to understand the reforms and the laws and the processes. If you want to focus the entire um, time with the commissioners from the disqualification process, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, meanwhile, the flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party, Dr. Papakwe Seyindum, is pleading with the Electoral Commission to be given the chance to remedy the errors that led to his disqualification. Speaking at a press conference on Tuesday, he explained that all he needs is only five minutes with the chairperson of the Electoral Commission. Dr. Indum also says he is prepared to go to court if his persuasion failed alleging the Electoral Commission gave preferential treatment to some of the top political parties. Maswala Bagba has a lot more. The singing and chanting sums up the frustration of these PPP supporters. The party hierarchy was earlier locked up in a meeting at an undisclosed location. Addressing the press after the crunch meeting, Dr. Papakwe Sindum said the anomaly on his nomination forms was more of an administrative issue and a five-minute discussion with the Electoral Commission will resolve the matter. Dr. Indum says the party will seek legal redress if all means to resolve the impasse fails. So I'm saying to you that all that is in this document, all that is required is a five-minute discussion with the returning officer, Mrs. Charlotte Osei. And the situation will be resolved and I will be cleared to contest this December 7, 2016 election as a presidential candidate. And, and I am confident, I am confident that once I am on the ballot, I will become the next president of the Republic. I am asking the chairperson of the EC and the returning officer to let me know by the end of this week, Thursday this week, when we can meet and deal with this matter positively. Because I believe that it is a simple administrative or clerical matter that can be resolved. And we even know that someone has even been given until tomorrow to deal with the issues that he encountered. And that some other contestant was not able to pay their filing fee, the stipulated time, and has been cleared to contest the election. That's it for the news this morning. Next, we have to bring you a review of what the stories are on the front and back pages of the newspapers. We'll also be looking at some online portals and reviewing some of those stories as well.